In this demo, we're going to go through how to issue tokens differently for different clients or different contexts. Uh, we're going to set up different token issuers and we're going to use custom client properties, which is new since QRD 4.4. And we're also going to modify the token procedures in order to do this. Let's start by setting up the context that we need. In the token profile, if you go to the token profile, there is a concept of token issuers. Token issuers are called when we need to issue a token and they have different purposes, so there are many. Uh, but by default, the system is usually set up just with the default setting. There's a data store for token issuance used that for tokens that need to be uh, persisted, like refresh tokens and normally opaque access tokens and so on. Uh, but also it's enabled for JSON web tokens, which ID tokens obviously use. So there, by default, it's set up to use RS-256 and a signing key and so on. Um, you can also override so that every access token is always issued as a JOT in the whole system on, or in, in this token profile. But we can also use custom token issuers. Um, so if we want variations for various scenarios, we can add more issuers. So we're going to do that in this example. We're going to use both a default opaque and we're going to use a default JOT, but we're also going to use a default or a, a custom issuer. So we name it something. custom. Uh, access token jot issuer for instance and I'm gonna save that and what is this yeah it's gonna issue a jot and the purpose will be access token so here we can say do we want to persist this in a database even though it's a jot uh, no we don't but we're not gonna use the default algorithm let's use something else uh, we're gonna use elliptic curve 256 and the signing key then, I'm going to pick one that we already had. Don't need to set a verification key store because it's a key pair here. And I want to include the key ID in the JOT header. That's it. Okay. So now we have this custom access token issuer. So what I want to do in this demo is I want to take a client and I have one called tools here. I'm going to duplicate that so that I have three clients that we can test. So I'm going to have tools JOT. I will just issue that the default JOT settings and I'm going to duplicate it one more time and say tools JOT custom which then will issue the, the custom ones. Okay so now we have three tools client so you don't need to do anything on the, no on the regular one that will just use the default behavior but the tools JOT one we're going to use something new in security 4.4 which is called uh, client properties. Uh, client properties are just configuration key value pairs that end up in the context when we work with procedures later on so they can be quite useful if we want to govern uh, things that happen. So I'm going to create a property called AT issuer and I'm going to say yeah this one should be default default jot. I made that up. Okay. And for the other client, tools custom, we're going to do the same. We're going to go to the advanced section here. We're going to say add property, AT issuer. But now we're going to use that custom access token issuer, the ID of that. Okay, so now we set up that one. We want to use the default jot settings. One, we want to use the, we didn't say anything, so it's going to use the opaque one. And the last one we're going to use this custom issue for. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to modify the endpoints. So on the endpoints page we see all the endpoints that the token profile exposes. And for each of those you can see that there are a number of flows defined. So the token endpoint, the OAuth token, can handle all of these OAuth flows. So we can actually modify the procedure that is running that is responsible for issuing tokens for each. So let's do that. Let's add uh, code flow token proc. There's a similar one for the authorized endpoint. Okay, so what do we need to do here? This is the default procedure. We can see that it first issues a delegation by retrieving the default delegation data and then calling the issuer with that data. Then it does the same for an access token, issues the access token and binds it to the delegation refresh and then later it checks if there's an open ID scope and then also issues an ID token and adds that to the response data 
and then returns the response data. And this is the actual JSON that will end up in the response. <clears throat> so you can do quite a lot of things here when you want to modify the uh, what happens on an endpoint. So you can have multiple token endpoints with different behaviors. So what we want to do now is we want to change how we issue the access token. So we're going to create a small helper function to do this. And we're going to call that issue access token. And we're going to need the context in there. We're going to need the access token data and the issued delegation. That's all we need. So now we're going to read, first of all, read the var var variable that we set on the client. So context.client contains the configuration for the client or the, the properties and, and things that are defined scopes and so on. So very useful object. So properties on there will give us the that list of properties that we just used. So here we can read the AT issuer. Now we need also to have a result. So issued token, that will be our result. So now we say simply if issuer type is undefined or sure type is null or perhaps we use a default issuer type is default if we set the value default uh, in the properties we should just issue the regular token um, issued token equals we should do what we did here so Right, like that. Else, if issuer type equals default jot, so this one we defined on our own. So this, there is a, if you have jots enabled, like that whole just jot section with default settings for issuing jots, that's user ID token. You can always access um, jot issuer for access tokens without having to do a custom one. Um, so on the context, there is something called get default access token jot issuer. So if you call that, that will just give you an issue with the default settings from the profile uh, for issuing a jot. So that's how simple it is to just issue a jot instead of the opaque token. But if you change the, the setting to be always issue just for access token, both of these will actually issue jots. Um, and finally, now comes the interesting part. Now we want to use the custom issue. So it wasn't default, it wasn't default jot. Now we want to try to issue it using the, the issuer that was defined. Issued token equals context dot. And now we can get uh, any access token issuer from the context. Get access token issuer. And here you can type the, the configured name for it, but we have it. Issuer type issue so same parameters so we can now get any access token issuer any of the custom ones by just naming it when we do get access token issuer and that will uh, issue it that way so now we just need to return issued token and we also need to call this function uh, here when we issue access token instead of directly calling the context here we're gonna say no now we're gonna call this oops uh, should copy it so I don't mistype that thing like that pass in the context access token data and issue delegation so now we've updated the behavior uh, for issuing access tokens so let's update and then go back and commit that change. Great. So now if we go to OAuth tools, we can use the clients we have. So we have the default client. We're gonna run a code flow. I'm probably already logged in, so it will just sing a sign on. And we got our opaque tokens. Very good. So we can look at those. Yeah the regular opaque token. So let's instead use the tools jot client that uses that default jot setting and run.
And now we got an access token instead in a JOT format, and we can see it's signed with RS-256, which is the default signing signature uh, algorithm that was in the token issuer default settings. So finally, let's use the custom client there, where we defined a specific issuer. So run the flow. That gave us also an access token JOT, but this time signed with ES-256. So this used a different key and a different algorithm because it called a different token issuer. So with this, we've configured client properties uh, that we then read in the in the um, token procedures in order to change the behavior of what happens when we issue tokens. Um, obviously, you can do anything with this, uh, not only how you issue tokens. You can decide if you want to issue multiple tokens and so on based on properties or other things on the client or other contextual information that you need. Uh, so you know now how to retrieve the issuers in the in the code also. Um, if you need to do more advanced things. You could, you could issue a token and stick it into another token very easily in the token procedure if you needed to. Hope this was useful. Thank you for listening.